ratios. You're going to be so sick of ratios before this class is over, so you might as well just learn to let them into your heart and learn to love them for what they are. So a ratio is simply a comparison of two things. Okay, so we're comparing things with ratios. Now there's three ways to write them. Um, we can write them at, with the colon, uh, with the word to, or uh, generally as a fraction. Um, I'm a huge fan of writing ratios as fractions, um, but each one of these things has a place right in math so um, it is what it is if it says write a ratio you really can get away with writing them in any way so um, that's uh, that's good okay so getting into this we're gonna talk about this table and I'm gonna do the first two lines with you I'm gonna ask you then to hit pause and try the last three so if you look at this first line we're gonna call it line A and you can see as a, with a colon, it's 12 colon 15. So when I want to write it with the word 2, I would just say 12 to 15. Notice 12 always comes first. As a fraction, whatever number comes first goes on tw top, 12 to 15. But hopefully, something triggers in your brain, and you're like, yo, 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 that's not reduced. So I got to reduce that top and bottom by 3, and I end up with 4 fifths. And then the last piece where it says written as a decimal. If I take 4, divide it by 5, I get 0.8. And what we're saying here is that you could say this is like 0.8 over 1. Um, and you might be saying, why would I make a fraction over 1 that doesn't make any sense? Well, so, we're going to get to per capita ratios, and then, my friend, you're going to need it. So you might as well embrace it while it's here. Okay, so let's go to line B. In line B, they start with the 5 to 20. Well, no big deal. 5 comes first. So with the colon, 5 comes first. With the fraction, 5 goes on top. Don't forget to reduce. 5 20ths reduces both by 5, and you end up with 1 fourth. As a decimal, that's 0 0.25. Okay, hit pause. I want you to fill in. We will call them lines C, D, and E for lack of um, creativity. And then come back and check your answers. I'll have them all filled in for you. All right, so check those. You'll notice uh, they all, in letter C, notice how our fraction here and our decimal are the same, because 5 divided by 1, excuse me, is just 5. And then notice I have asterisks by D and E here on the end, because those are rounded answer. There are no directions of what to round to, so I just want two decimal places, because, you know, I do what I want. All right, so let's go to the next page. Got some questions here. Now, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, between 1970 and 2012, the average number of people per household declined from 3.1 to 2.6. This is just kind of an understanding question. How is it possible to have 2.6 people per household? And I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, I've met some people, and they're only partially there, and there, my friend, is the 0.6. And while that's a valid point, it's not really true. Uh, so we're talking, the key word here is average. Remember to find the average, you add up a bunch of numbers and you divide by how many there are. And that's a bad example that I just wrote there. But periodically you have decimal answers. So when you're talking about an average, you're talking about um, a bunch of data added together and divided. It's not actual households. We don't really have 0.6 of a person. Okay, number two. In movie cameras, 35 millimeter film was shot with an aspect ratio of 4 to 3. HDTVs have an aspect ratio of 16 to 9. Are these ratios the same? So the question is, does 4 thirds equal 16 ninths? That is the question. Well, there's a couple ways you can do this, but I like to just kind of do it this way. To get to 16 from 4, I have to multiply by 4. 4 times 4 is 16. It's a little game. Woo! Okay, well, mathematically, you got to do the same. So if I take 3 times 4, is that 9? No. 3 times 4 is 12. So if I wanted an equal ratio, I would have 16 over 12. So are these ratios the same? No. No, they're not. All right, let's get to another table. And again, I'm going to do um, some two lines with you, and then I'm going to have you do the last two. You can see in the first one, well, actually, forget the first one. Let's go straight to the second one. We're going to take our ratio, 12 inches to 36 inches. You'll notice they're in the same unit. That's important. To write a ratio, you've got to be in the same units. So I can write this as 12 inches over 36 inches. 
Since the inches are the same, they'll cancel out, and 12 over 36 reduces to one-third. Okay, well, let's write that as a decimal. Um, well, when I write that as a decimal, my uh, I'm going to have to round. So we'll go ahead and put point three three. I'll just go two decimal places. Now the last one, did you need to convert the units? No, because they were both given in inches already, right? But when I get to the next line, I should have given these letters, A, B, C, D. I'm not creative. Don't, don't hate me for it. I've got inches and feet. That just doesn't work. I can't compare inches and feet. So I need to go ahead and use um, uh, same units. So if I make, I'm going to write this down here, okay? So we're going to do B down here. I can do 9 inches, 3 feet. Well, 3 feet, there's 12 inches in a foot, so I have 3 of them. That's 36 inches. Again, you can see my inches will cancel out, and I'm just left with 9 over 36, and that reduces to 1 fourth. Um, per one, so as a decimal is 0.25. Did I have to convert units? Yes. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Okay, hit pause, do the last two lines C and D, and then come back and check your answers. All right, checking it out. Both in C and D we have to convert units. Three weeks is the same as 21 days, and three dollars is the same as 300 cents. So those um, reduced down, changed to decimals, and yes, you converted units in both of those. Let's do some questions. Jane earns $10.50 an hour and Lee earns $12 an hour. Write the ratio of what Jane earns to what Lee earns. Key here, Jane is first. So I'm always going to look at Jane over Lee in terms of our ratios. So it says as a fraction, reduce and no decimal. So Jane's first. So Jane is $10.50. Lee is $12. Okay, well I don't want in decimal, so... I can just do it kind of easy. If I move it one place here and one place here, I end up with 105 over 120 because 0 .0, 0.0, 0, those would just cancel out. Well, now I have to reduce. So if we look at this, um, I right off the bat see I can reduce them by 3, and that's not the right number, 5, because they end in 5 and 0. So uh, 105 divided by 5 is 21. 120 divided by 5 is 24. Now I can divide by 3. I was ahead of myself and I end up with seven eighths. Okay, as a decimal, okay, well now we just take seven divided by eight and I get uh, 0.875. And then write a meaningful sentence. Meaningful sentence just means that it, you can actually tell somebody what it means. So when I look at seven eighths, I know that this is Jane and this is Lee. That means Jane earns seven dollars for every eight dollars earned by Lee. That's what it means, right? If you look at this one, you could put it over one. So Jane earns roughly 88 cents for every one dollar earned by Lee, if you use this one. Key is knowing who is represented in the numerator, who is represented in the denominator. Number four. A recipe calls for two cups of milk to for three cups of pancake mix. What is the ratio of pancake mix to milk? Notice what comes first. Pancake mix to milk. That means pancakes on top, milk on the bottom. Well, pancake, three cups. Three cups over two cups of milk. Cups cancel out, and my ratio is three to two. Now, that recipe, this is part B, that recipe feeds four. How would I scale it up to feed 16? Okay, well, from 4, how do you get to 16? Well, you multiply by 4. So we would need to multiply each of these by 4. So you would need 12 cups of pancake mix and 8 cups of milk. That's what that means. And then number 5, explain what happens to the unit of measure. Well, you'll notice that they all canceled out, right, because we were dealing with the same thing. Cups, when you went back, um, excuse me, all of these, since we had the same top and bottom, they canceled out, so we just had a nice easy ratio. Okay, now when you get to this one, um, these don't have the same units, so we can't just get rid of them. And I know in that first example they show you, it doesn't work, but notice in, in the, the written statement, 
you can't just say it's three to two. Well, what is what? So you have to make sure you're being specific and using the correct quantities. Okay, so sometimes we do have to compare things that don't have the same units, but you can't cancel them out if they are not the same units. Okay, so let's do uh, the treats and dogs together, and I'll have you guys do the other three. Um, so we have 44 treats to 8 dogs. That reduces both by 4 to 11 halves, right? So per 1 is 5.5. And what does that mean? Well, if I look at the fraction, treats are on top. So 11 treats for every 2 dogs. Or the second one is like over 1. So that's like saying 5.5 treats for every one dog. And I left out a couple words because I'm writing with my finger and I'm running out of space. Okay? So I need to hit pause, try the last three on your own, see if you can come up with a fraction, a decimal, and your written statements. Alright, so you can see each of these has a reduced fraction, uh, changed to a decimal, top number divided by the bottom number, and then um, if we're talking about A, B, and C, A and B both have two sentences. Um, one using the fraction, one using the decimal. But you'll see in letter C that the fraction and the decimal both reduce to be the same, so we really only have one sentence, 16 goats for one acre of land. A couple more questions here. The local firehouse cooked 780 pieces of chicken for an estimated 240 people coming to the fundraiser. What is the ratio of chicken to people? Be specific. Chicken comes first. That means chicken's on top, people are on the bottom. Well, there was 780 pieces of chicken, 240 people. If I just say 780 to 240, that doesn't mean anything. That's not, it's not a good ratio. So if I go ahead and divide 780 divided by 240, it gives me an answer of 3.25. I can make that a fraction by putting it over 1. Chicken is still on the top. People are still on the bottom. That means there are... 3.25 pieces of chicken per person. So every person for this fundraiser can have 3.25 pieces of chicken. That's what it boils down to. That's a whole lot easier to kind of understand. All right, in seven, there are 6.6 .6 million people in Indiana, and the area is 35,826 square miles. What is the ratio of Hoosiers to square miles of area? So Hoosiers on top. Well, 6.6 .6 million. Okay, million means six decimal places. So I'm going to go six places. This, is, this six is one pass. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That is 6.6 .6 million over 35,826, right? Because we've got Hoosiers over square miles. That's what we're doing. Now, again, that's a huge fraction. It means nothing. Let's go ahead and divide that. If we divide it, we get 184.22. So that's how many Hoosiers for every one square mile of area. Because when you divide, that puts the number over one.